G'day fellas. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at a strategy for the Ottoman that's becoming more and more popular at the top of the ladder. It's a strategy where you age up to the fortress age and then you build four town centers, which for the Ottomans is something a little bit crazy. But before we do get to it, we're currently live over on Twitch. If you're interested, this evening, we're gonna be doing this build as well as a couple of other builds for the Portuguese, maybe even trying out Sweden again. And we're going to be doing a ranged infantry tier list. This will be uploaded on YouTube at a later date. But if you're interested in seeing that, then I encourage you to come over to Twitch TV, say good day in the chat, and check out the ranged infantry tier list. All right, let's get to the video. Ozzy Drong! Ozzy Drong! Ozzy Drong! So like any standard Ottoman opening, it's very, very slow. We don't have to train any villagers from the town center. The most important thing though, is that we continue to move our explorer in the direction of the trade post. So you need to know where your trade posts are on your maps. Be familiar with it. We're also gonna be putting down a mosque straight away. Now I've had a very fortunate spawn in that I've got a wood treasure in base, which means that I'm not gonna need to chop the 50 wood that I normally would need to, to get down my trading post, my mosque and my house. I'm only gonna need to chop 10 wood which is going to mean that I save a lot of time for my age up. I'm going to be building the mosque immediately as soon as I've got enough wood to do it because that's going to begin trickling in XP. And for the Ottomans, the more XP that they've got, the better off they're going to be in the early game. It's important that you're also going for a trade post as quickly as possible. Don't stop to take any treasures. Don't stop to pick up any treasures. I used my crack shot in the beginning of the game because it was on the way to the trading post. So it's important that when you're in your game, you make sure that you're going as quickly as you can because you don't want to possibly miss a trouvoir when it passes the trade post. There can be very specific timings that you'll continue to learn as you get more experienced, but these are often very tight and mean that you can't do a lot with your explorer until your trade post is up. Once you've gathered the extra wood that you're required for your house, your mosque, and your trade post, it's important that with your explorer, you're looking for food treasures. Food treasures are gonna help you age up faster so you can reach the second age sooner and then you can send your 700 coin and age up to the fortress age even sooner. It's all about timing with the Ottomans. But you'll be rallying all of your villagers to food once you've acquired that wood. So this strategy has been popularized by a player by the name of Men's Vitamins. I'll leave a link down to his Twitch in the description if you're interested in checking him out when he plays live. He's a very talented player, so I'd encourage you to check him out, chuck him a follow, and say good day from me if you stop by. So with this strategy, the build order that we're going to be following is three villagers into 700 coin, followed by 700 wood, and then a covered wagon in the third age. The next shipment that you send after that will depend on the state of the game. Whether you send a thousand wood and make your fourth town center, whether you send a thousand coin and get ready to ship Mamelukes, or whether you send eight Janissaries and get ready to defend an enemy attack. You can also ship two Falconets, but it's advisable that you avoid doing it too soon, otherwise they may get picked off by as little as three or four Hussars. When you're aging up, you've got two different options. The first option that you can go for is the Governor, which is going to provide you the Tower and the 200 coin, or you can go up with the Quartermaster, which is going to provide you wood. Typically, it's going to be a little bit more of a slower age up if you go for the Quartermaster because you're going to have to gather that 200 coin that you're being provided by the Governor, and it's going to take more villager seconds. So in a situation where you think that you might be rushed, or you think that you might be under some early pressure, it's normally advisable to take the governor. During the transition period, you're just focusing on collecting food to get to that magic 1200 mark. Depending on who you aged up with will depend on whether you need to gather 100 coin or 300 coin, so make sure that you allocate villagers to coin appropriately. Upon age up, you're gonna be sending 700 coin followed by 700 wood as soon as possible. Ideally, before your 700 coin arrives, you want to have gathered your 300 coin up completely. That way you're not gathering extra coin and can be gathering all the food that you need to gather for your age up. That way you avoid mismacroing. When you go up, you've got three primary options. The first one is the caravel and 400 wood. The second one is the four hussars and the third one are the abyss guns. Because you're aging up so early, it doesn't really make sense to be going up with the exiled prince because you'd be up before six minutes and be in a very vulnerable position, having played all the cards in your hand already. Typically on water maps, I'll opt to take the 400 wood and the galley, especially against civilizations which are likely to be water booming. Against a civilization that I think might be applying pressure early, I take the four hussars. And when I'm on land against a civilization that's gonna be typically passive, I'm gonna take the abyss guns. When the 700 wood arrives, you're gonna be building a barracks with it and two houses. Allocate your villages where you prioritize food, but don't neglect wood as you're going to need to gather 100 wood before you reach the third age so that you can afford to build your second town center. During your transition to the third age, you're going to begin production of Janissaries. Upon reaching the third age, you're gonna be sending a covered wagon from the home city. Now, this shipment is flexible. In the event that you're under pressure, don't still send your covered wagon. You need to adapt. Send eight Janissaries, send five Abus, 
send five hussars if you need to. In optimal circumstances, you're going to be sending a covered wagon. Now you might be wondering, why do I send a covered wagon instead of a thousand wood? With a thousand wood, I can build two town centers. The covered wagon actually increases your town center limit by one, which means that instead of being able to build a maximum of three town centers as the Ottomans, you can build four town centers. The remainder of the game is going to depend on the way that you play and the way that your opponent plays, and I really can't advise, but I can give you some basic guidelines based on my experience. At the beginning of the Fortress Age, the unit composition that you're going to look for is essentially just Janissaries, and you're going to want to build up a mass of between 10 and 15 Janissaries before you ship in your two Falconets. Now you can ship the Falconets early if you're confident that you're not going to lose them, so this means that you might be walling them in, or it means that you might be playing a little bit more safe than usual. But if you've got a mass that's smaller than this, it means that you're much more likely to lose your falconets, and your falconets are worth a lot more than just the thousand resources they cost, because they require your opponent to counter them. That means whether they have to invest in an artillery foundry, that means whether they have to invest in 15 hussars, but they have to take them out and they have to think outside the box to beat them. You're then going to want to begin mixing Abus guns into your mass. So this means having your first control group as Janissaries, your second control group as Abus guns, and your third control group as Falconets or Culverin, depending on what you're up against. When you're microing your Janissaries and your Abus guns, it's important that you use your Abus guns to poke down the enemy units. In the event your opponent has got cavalry, it's important that you bring your Janissaries in front so that they can protect the Abus guns. There's a couple of different techniques you can do for this, but the best way to do it is just through the use of control groups. Have one control group allocated to your Janissaries, and the second control group allocated to your Abus guns. Your Abus guns are also very effective against enemy artillery, but it's important that you don't bite off more than you can chew. If the enemy is massing artillery, don't let your Abus take on the fight themselves. You need to train Culverin and use the Culverin to kill the enemy artillery, as while the Abus guns are good against artillery, they're expensive and they're fragile. It's important that you don't forget the upgrades that are in your mosque. The first type of upgrade is the millet system, which is going to increase the speed that your villagers spawn. With the Ottomans, you don't train villagers, they naturally spawn for you as a civilization bonus, and you can increase the speed that they spawn at by upgrading the millet system. The second upgrade that's available increases the limit of villagers that you can build. This starts out at 25 villagers. The second one moves it to 45, the third one to 70, and the final one to a maximum of 99 villagers. If you don't research these technologies, then your villager production is going to be significantly hampered, so it's important that you prioritize it and don't forget it. But just remember, you don't want to prioritize it too early. There's no point in getting the final villager limit upgrade if you've only got 22 villagers. The last thing I want to speak about is how easy it is to macro for this unit combination of Janissary Abus. You don't need to worry about what your resource allocation is and whether it's perfect or not. All you need to do is make Janissaries and Abus, and if you've got more coin, make Abus, and if you've got more so food, make Janissaries. It's and very like simple, and means that during the like mid-game, it's very common that you're going to have less than 100 of every single resource, because you're just going to keep making batches, and whichever resource you've got more of, you're going to make more units of. It's that simple. Now obviously that doesn't mean you have 99 villages on food and say, well Drongo said it didn't matter. What I mean I is that you can have 40 villages on like food, that. and 60 on coin, or 23 on food, and 12 on coin and you're still going to have a ratio you're still going to be building up an excess of one resource and with that excess of that resource you can then mitigate it by training the opposite unit in this game where i'm using the strategy i actually comment how easy the macro is with this strategy gen abus is so easy to macro for as well like it's retarded it's so easy like, look how well this is macroed. I'm, I'm 16 minutes into the game and I'm under 100 resources for everything. This strategy is incredibly interesting because it enables the Ottoman player in a time where the meta is incredibly greedy to keep up their economy with their opponent's economy while still maintaining unit production. It's easy to maintain your economic upgrades while at the same time just making only units. And I really won't be surprised to see this strategy begin to appear a lot more at top levels just because it means the Ottomans no longer fall off in the way that they used to. Perhaps we even see the Ottomans develop into an eco-orientated sieve. Well, fellas, thanks for sticking around and watching the video. The next video that we've got coming up is going to be on the Spanish Fast Industrial. So this is a strategy that's been recently touched by the patch notes, but the fortunate news is it's still incredibly strong, and I'm confident that you guys are going to like it. Thanks for watching.